1984 to 1989, LJN produced the first action figure line for the World Wrestling Federation. But that's not why you're here. In this video, we're going to focus on all of the products they didn't produce. On the Wrestling Superstars 89 backing card by Grand Toys, we saw previews for the likes of Bad News Brown, Brother Love, The Bushwhackers, Demolition Smash, and The Barbarian. While none of these figures made it to the prototype stages that we know of, here's a few that have. Here we have a Series 1 Rowdy Roddy Piper donning a Panther shirt before it was quickly changed to his signature Hot Rod shirt. Also in Series 1 was this Hillbilly Gym that initially featured a black undershirt before it was quickly changed to a more toyetic, colorful red. Quite the opposite happened to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. While prototype pictures showed his figure in a black and red tight scheme, it was soon color reduced to strictly black. While Tito Santana's action figure was released in this exact color scheme, the prototype images showed it in a completely different mold and sculpt. LJN toyed with the idea of including George the Animal Steel's signature body hair on his action figure, before ultimately removing the deco and just going with the textured body hair sculpt on the figure. Early prototypes of the Outback Jack action figure featured different colored boots and a lighter colored vest. While Haku was released in his Islander tights, he was initially shown with his King's Crown and simple white and purple tights. King Harley Race was initially shown having white knee pads before quickly being changed to purple. While it may not be a huge alteration, it's a change nonetheless. Early advertisements show ravishing Rick Rude in white boots and green tights very reminiscent of Jake the Snake Roberts. Superfly Jimmy Snooka's action figure was initially shown to have cheetah print wrist tape and bright yellow knee pads. The Magnificent Don Morocco's t-shirt was initially shown having yellow text before quickly being changed to a more toyetic bright white. The Birdman Coco Beware was initially shown in blue attire rather than the red we saw on store shelves. Ted RCD's first and only action figure was initially advertised having white and red accented sneakers. Continuing on the footwear trend, the Killer Bees were shown having yellow and black accented boots, as seen here on Jim Brunzel. Adorable Adrian Adonis was advertised as having a molded scarf in various colorways. In the end, it was removed from the figure completely. Mail Away advertisements for Series 6 showed Andre the Giant in blue boots and a black singlet. The back of the blister card showed classy Freddy Blassie in a completely different mold and pose than what we found at retail. Luscious Johnny V's action figure saw a slight change from white sneakers to black. While never publicly advertised, Bobby the Brain Heenan was initially planned to have a different pose, including his signature point. The resin prototype for the Mouth of the South featured him with alternate deco on his shoes and megaphone. Various advertisements and catalogs featured Mean Gene Okerlund in an alternate pose. No microphone? What were they thinking? This Vince McMahon in alternate attire was gifted to the chairman himself by LJN Toys as a thank you for the success of the Wrestling Superstars toy line. Early prototypes of Miss Elizabeth featured her with long pink gloves. Years later, an alternate pose naked Miss Elizabeth was discovered. I don't think they ever planned to release this one on store shelves. 
This heavily debated Sergeant Slaughter figure was initially planned to be the sixth man in Wrestling Superstar Series 1. This Killer Con prototype was cast by an LJN employee from the original mold that never got used. This Macho Man and Hulk Hogan was shown in a toy catalog featuring cloth goods clothing. Also found in that catalog in cloth goods is King Kong Bundy, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and George the Animal Steel. Here we see the Junkyard Dog and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat also decked out in cloth goods attire. Check out this early prototype featuring a shiny plastic championship title reminiscent of today's belts. The Ugandan giant Kamala was originally planned to come with a removable entrance mask. Imagine if your 16-inch Hulk Hogan action figure came complete with real flocked hair. The Slingham Flingham Wrestling Ring was originally advertised as having silver posts and alternate ring skirts. Also, check out that Panther shirt Rowdy Roddy Piper. Early toy catalogs showed the Slingham Flingham Wrestling Ring coming with a cassette tape and that alternate pose Mean Gene Okerlund. The LJN Bendies went through various changes since their inception. Here you can see alternate versions of Jesse the Body Ventura, Macho Man, George Steele, and Andre the Giant. And here's a better look at that oddly molded George the Animal Steele. This early prototype of Captain Lou Albano is very reminiscent of his 8-inch counterpart. The back of the blister card featured bendies with alternate molds and deco that never got released. Here we see the unreleased British Bulldogs bendies, Dynamite Kid and Davy Boy Smith. Here we have alternate unreleased versions of Corporal Kirshner and Jesse the Body Ventura. This Brutus the Barber Beefcake Bendy is actually just a repainted Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. And here we can add another unreleased George the Animal Steel LJN item to the list. Tito Santana, Don Morocco, Terry Funk, and Bruno San Martino were all planned to be a part of the Bendy's line, but now reside in the collection of Matt Cardona. LJN planned an entire vehicles line featuring superstars on motorcycles and cars. Here we have a closer look at Hulk Hogan's motorcycle. And here's a better look at the motorcycle of the one and only King Kong Bundy. These cars are modeled after Piper's Hot Rod and Hogan's Convertible from the Rock and Wrestling cartoon. Also, check out those articulated figures inside them. Early prototype images of the LJN Thumb Wrestlers featured alternate molds with articulated arms and heads. Here we see unproduced prototypes of Don Morocco, George the Animal Steel, and a repainted Paul Orndorff in blue trunks. At one point, Terry Funk and Andre the Giant were even slated to have their own thumb wrestlers. This image shows a prototype of Junkyard Dog in full long tights as opposed to the trunks that he was released in. 
Unbeknownst at the time, LJN was planning a smaller scale action figure line with G.I. Joe style articulation. Here we see Hulk Hogan, The Iron Sheik, and King Kong Bundy from the collection of Matt Cardona. Here we see another close-up shot of The Iron Sheik. Scaled slightly larger than Hasbro's, this unproduced torso of the Junkyard Dog was also planned for the articulated line. This unproduced torso of Captain Lou Albano leaves us wondering who else was planned for the articulated action figure line by LJN. A larger scale line of figures called Muscle Grips featuring Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage featured arm raising action when their legs were squeezed. You'll notice these Muscle Grip prototypes from Matt Cardona's collection feature alternate championship title belts around their waists. Here we see various prototypes from Matt Cardona's collection, leaving us to wonder if there's any more out there to be found. If you'd like to see more unproduced action figures and prototypes from various wrestling figure lines, follow us on Instagram at Figheel and at Unreleased Wrestling Figs. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Figheel and at Unreleased Wrestling Figs. And you can visit the merch store at Pro Wrestling Tees and check out the Unreleased Wrestling Figure Coloring Books available now on Amazon.com, including Prime Shipping.